Hey guys, this is Dr. LeHugh. Thank you for joining me again on another video. This uh, video is how to tell if you are a seven, uh, type seven on the Enneagram. And this is uh, really in relation to the context of the work envir environment or the office environment. And so if you are on the fence as to whether or not you're a seven, this video might be helpful to you. Or if you are a seven and you just want to understand uh, more about yourself so that you can be a more productive, more effective worker, more useful in the workplace, then this, this will be helpful for you. All right, so how to tell if you're a type seven of you from the inside. Okay, um, number one, if your mind emphasizes the positive information, um, the positive elements of work, if that's where your mind goes first, if that's what you want to dwell on or the positive things about work and you enjoy thinking about and working on future possibilities and learning things that interest you. Um, not that you would have a maybe a long dedicated interest in a subject, but you have a variety of interests and they come uh, in sparks and in waves. So you're focused on um, a topic or you're focused on a project and um, then you'll, you'll focus all of your energy on that project. It may be all you think about. You become obsessed with it. But then uh, after some time, uh, especially when you start to see that, you know, either everything's coming together and it's almost wrapped up, or if you feel like you're starting to hit overwhelming obstacles and the work becomes tedious or the information becomes redundant or tedious and you start to feel the impulse to move away from that project or to move away from that information, you no longer enjoy learning more about that topic. So if you kind of jump from subject to subject, you find yourself jumping from subject to subject, you might very well be a seven. Um, if you have, number two, if you have the bright, shiny object syndrome, the bright, shiny object syndrome, you're distracted by um, other things. You're distracted by engaging ideas, um, attracted uh, to things that pop into your mind or pop into your vision, and you kind of have that squirrel you know, um, aspect to your thinking where you can easily get distracted uh, or sometimes even distract yourself because the work is becoming tedious or monotonous. You may find yourself thinking about other things, wanting to do other things, um, failing to work on what is you know, the priority in favor of what is more enjoyable. All right, number three, you are easily fascinated by interesting people interesting events or interesting ideas. So you like learning new things, you enjoy going to new places, uh, meeting new people, and uh, you love new experiences, new adventures. You like going to new restaurants, trying, you'd love to try everything on the menu if you had time, if you had the resources to do that, but you generally have that sense of adventure um, of seeing, trying to, you know, think about and wanting to see or perceive what's exciting around the corner. If what's exciting around the corner is more exciting than, than what's in front of you, there's a good chance that you might be a seven. If you tend to be interested, number four, if you tend to be interested in many different things, but you don't go very deeply into any of them. Now you might think you go deep um, because typically what sevens do is they go deep enough to feel like they've mastered the subject as a generalist. and um, um, so sevens, unlike fives, who may stay with a subject for years and years, <clears throat> sevens often feel like they, they go deep into a subject uh, deep for them and deeper than most people would want to go or deeper than most people are willing to go into that subject. And then when they feel like they've relatively mastered it, then they, they tend to kind of want to move on um, and then skim along the surface, kind of what you would call a jack of all trades and a master of none. Okay, number five, you enjoy enjoyment. So you value enjoyment. You value being happy. And you're happiest when you are happy. You actively seek happiness um, and look at that as a positive emotion. And, and the flip side of that is you repel against um, sadness or disappointment or you know depressing type thoughts. You tend to move away from those things and not really want to sit with them and not want to do with them. Um, so it, and for many sevens, it, it feels like it's a choice. You know, why would I think about negative things? Why would I sit and dwell on the, on the problems or sit and dwell on 
disappointments and failures when I could focus on positives. Okay, next, uh, I think we're on number one, two, three, four, five, six. You automatically reframe negatives into positives. So not only do you focus on positives and focus on the positive, but then you tend to reframe negative things that have happened to you and spin them in a, into a more positive light. So um, you tend to want to look at the bright side. You tend to want to paint the past in brighter colors. The sevens often, you know, will remember their childhood in very positive, fond uh, terms. When in actuality, their childhood may have been difficult and may have been hard, and probably there's been some pain and heartache along the way. But sevens have a a gift, you might say, a gift to to turn those experiences into the positive aspects, or to focus on the positive aspects of those experiences. Um, tend to find what are called silver linings to every cloud, or focus on the best in people, or focus on whatever is um, whatever is the positive. All right, next, you rarely complain about your work. Your mind emphasizes the positive elements of your job. If you're complaining about your work a lot, you've probably already quit that job. And sevens may have a may find it difficult to stay with a particular job for very long because there's so many interesting things to do. And when things get difficult in a workplace or when relationships get stressed, um, it may be your impulse as a seven to just abandon ship, cut your losses, and move on. Besides, the thrill of starting something new or trying something new um, isn't something that sevens avoid or are afraid of. So if you have that sense about you to um, uh, not complain about work, um, because you're probably, if you get to that point, you're probably just ready to, to be done. When it gets boring, um, you figure out ways to stay positive and stay engaged. All right, next, you don't like to be limited or constrained in any way. You don't like the limitations of imposed structure. In other words, you don't really want to be micromanaged. And sevens don't want to micromanage others as well. We like some freedom uh, you know, to be able to, to color in the lines, but then maybe to color outside the lines as well a little bit. So if you find yourself kind of resisting uh, in soft rebellion, resisting against authority, and don't really want to... to to be perceived as a person in authority yourself, like to keep a flat organizational structure where everybody is friends and uh, everybody is responsible to one another um, for their work. And you don't, you kind of resist that hierarchical structure that is often in most offices, then you may very possibly be a seven because sevens tend to resist that. We, we tend to uh, focus on friendships and Changing people, motivating people through influencing them with passion and with charm and with wit and humor uh, rather than uh, through deadlines and uh, micromanaging. So you may find yourself um, resisting those things if you are a seven. Uh, because sevens don't want to be constrained. We want our freedom um, to be able to uh, explore options. And so we intuitively know, sevens intuitively understand that the people that are over you that have the uh, the position above you have the ability to constrain you and to control you and the never ever behavior for those dealing with sevens is never try to control a seven because sevens have the gift or the supernatural power of teleporting uh, they will just kind of disappear they probably won't come direct in a direct attack against authority but they will try to through to charm through friendships um, to try to evade uh, those those imposed leadership structures okay next you feel comfortable when you have to deal w you feel uncomfortable when you have to deal with unpleasant emotions you feel uncomfortable when you have to deal with unpleasant emotions it can be difficult for sevens to have difficult conversations when when you're in the workplace you know there's going to be times when people who are being managed um, need to be told the truth. They need somebody to look at them and, you know, the eye and be direct with them and be straightforward with them, not beat around the bush. And the same is true of subordinates. When they go and speak to their manager about uh, whatever issues are going on, they need to be able to be direct, straightforward, and confrontational. Um, but sevens are going to try to avoid that. They're typically going to try to avoid those difficult conversations. Um, it's just not something that's it's pleasant, and so sevens are, are going to beat around the bush and maybe never get to the point. Um, next, you're good at winging it 
or you can fake it until you make it okay so um, sevens are pretty quick-witted people if you're a seven you're a pretty sharp person in terms of being able to think on your feet um, and getting and being able to bail yourself out of trouble when you feel like you're in trouble and so this ability sometimes um, you know keeps you from preparing as well as you should for things because you tend to be able to think rapidly on your feet and be able to synthesize information well and um, so you work hard to make things happen um, and um, when um, maybe maybe that sometimes you're not putting as much effort into your planning and into the structure as as is needed just because of that ability to think on your feet um, next you like to have many options so sevens will have a plan a a plan b a plan c and if that doesn't work out you know an escape plan and so if you like to have a lot of options and you like things to be flexible and spontaneous you're probably a seven you don't like hierarchies um, we already kind of talked about this but um, you want your boss to be your friend you want to try to make friends with the boss not in order to maybe advance yourself like some types might but just to sort of eliminate the pressures that come with um, with that kind of hierarchical relationship uh, you don't want to be strict on others and you don't want others to be too strict on you and last you enjoy being in leadership positions that involve generating innovative ideas and envisioning the next big thing so if you're a seven you probably excel at brainstorming and coming up with innovative ideas you like to think outside the box you can synthesize uh, information from several different spheres uh, and bring them together and uh, envision possibilities and potential which can be a great asset you know if um, if that is developed so hopefully this helps you if you're trying to understand if you are a seven particularly in the context of the work environment uh, I hope this video is helpful to you as you continue to process and think about these things um, I'm thankful to um, the book Nine Leadership Types of Leadership by uh, Beatrice Chestnut. And uh, as always, guys, be, be present to life and uh, like, comment, and subscribe for more great information. All right, blessings.